Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today, as you can see, I have a Dell here for us to take a look at. And this is the Dell Latitude 7480. At least that's what it would lead you to believe. If we flip this case over, we will see that it does clearly say Latitude 740. Okay, fine. And we'll note a manufacturer date of 2017. Okay, fine. What's, what's the punchline here, you're wondering? Well, this is an actual fact, an 8th generation i7 CPU on the inside. Now, for the eagle-eyed among you, you will probably know that the 7480 did not have an 8th generation option, and the date of 2017 doesn't really line up. And that is because this is actually a Dell 7490. And somewhere along its lifespan, its cover got replaced with a 7480 cover, or the entire chassis is original, and the motherboard on the inside is actually from a 7490. I don't know which one is true, but one thing I can tell you is that if you were looking at this sight unseen and you didn't turn it on and you didn't do any legwork, you would probably think that this is indeed a 7480, and it's not. So, just a bit of a disclaimer that if you are shopping for a 7480 or a 7490, uh, to really make sure you know exactly what you're getting. Apparently these two covers are 100% interchangeable or the motherboards are interchangeable, or both. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about some of the definitive things that we know about these two chassis. Both of them are going to sport a display that we can see here, and Dell calls this their narrow border display because of the thinner bezels here and here. Thankfully, unlike some models that we've seen on the channel, they put the web camera in a respectable location that is actually going to make it usable. A few other things that we'll note is a point stick with some buttons uh, dedicated to that. It is a little bit disappointing to see that the button hinges down like this toward this plastic piece. Um, doesn't necessarily make it the most comfortable thing to use, but quite serviceable. And our buttons down here for the trackpad, a little on the spongy side, but again, serviceable. No click on the pad whatsoever. So it is definitely a machine that I think is very important to know about those things just to make sure that you're going to be happy with the user interface. You will note from the design of the top case that the keyboard cannot be replaced through the top. You have to remove everything on the inside to do a keyboard replacement. So again, keep that in mind. Jumping back up to the display, we are looking at 14 inches and it came in three flavors. A 1366 by 768 panel, which thankfully this is not. You had a 1920 by 1080 panel, and that came in non-touch and touch. And some of these models actually came without web cameras installed. So again, make sure that you're seeing a web camera there. Don't take it for granted. And that was included in your display options. I don't believe it was included as another option. And lastly, you have a QHD 2560 by 1440 touch Gorilla Glass 4 panel option as well. Now, CPU choices for the 7490 were either 7th or 8th generation Intel. This is the i7-8650U, but it came in a variety of other flavors. And if you are looking at 7480s, they were either 6th or 7th generation. So there is literally overlap in that 7th generation area between these two chassis. So that can make shopping for these a little bit confusing unless you do your homework. Your GPUs will vary uh, obviously from 6th, 7th, and 8th generation Intel, but they're all integrated. And RAM was between 4 to 32 gigabytes DDR4, and that's across all of those chassis. And the frequency was 2,133 megahertz. Drives on the inside are M.2 SATA or M.2 NVMe style. Both are supported. And lastly, I've read reports of a 3-cell battery and a 4-cell battery. Uh, the 3 cell, a 42 watt hour variant, and the 4 cell, a 60 watt hour variant. Which one's on the inside of this? We'll have to crack it open and see what we see. But before we do that, let's finish off our look at this laptop with a tour of the ports. So on the left hand side, we have two USB 3.0, HDMI, a USB Type C, and then of course our barrel plug for charging. Along the front, we don't really have much going on other than an indicator light in this corner. And on the right hand side, we have laptop lock slot. This isn't Kensington, this is something else. I can't remember the name. 
We do have a full-sized Ethernet port that expands, another USB 3.0. We do have a SIM and SD card uh, slot. Both of them are, I believe, uh, micro and nano. We do have a headphone microphone combo jack. And then along the back, we have absolutely nothing. Let's continue our exploration of this machine by opening up. So we're gonna grab our standard Phillips screwdriver. And this is a pretty trivial affair of just spinning out all of the screws on the bottom case. And these do appear to be captive, which is great. With all the screws loose, I'm going to choose this back corner because it seems to be lifting. And I'm going to grab a plastic pry tool here, my old gift card, and pop the panel, give it a good wiggle, and off it comes. That's actually pretty easy. And on the inside, we can see essentially all of the serviceable components. So we have two DIMM slots. Both of them are labeled DDR4, as we mentioned earlier. I know that we have an eight gigabyte stick here. And again, we can max that out to 32 gigs. We do have our M.2 slot over here. And looking at the chassis cutouts, at one point, it looks like this would have been designed to handle a full two and a half inch bay if it had a smaller battery. Now this is the 60 watt hour battery. This is the biggest one that it came in. There was a standard version and a long life version. And this one is labeled as a standard. The other battery would of course be considerably shorter, probably cutting off around here. We have two downward firing speakers up at the front of the machine. We do have our CMOS battery located over here. We have a Wi-Fi card located over here, and our LTE WAN card, if it was equipped, would be occupying this slot over here. We do have a relatively small cooling solution here, covering over a CPU, and it's just interesting to see that that's the solution that they've got for an i7. It would be interesting to see what that would do under load and whether or not this would be a sufficient cooling system for an i7 U-series uh, processor. Beyond that, if you want to service the keyboard or trackpad, you're obviously having to remove the battery, and then of course the entire system board from the machine. So it is a bit of an ordeal. We also have an LED board down here, which is just, again, powering that light that we saw at the beginning. We have our display connector up here, and the hinges are easily accessible, and the screws that support them. So all in all, it's not a bad little laptop in terms of serviceability. You can pop that off, remove and service most of the main components with the exception of the keyboard without removing everything, which is good. All of it seems to be mounted on the correct side of the board facing the user. So with that being said, let's go ahead and put this cover back on and see what we get for some boot times. Okay, with everything back together, let's go ahead and open this thing up and see how fast we can get this computer to turn on. It's also cute to note that we do have a Core i7 sticker, which is accurate for the CPU on the inside, but of course the top is just badge latitude and doesn't have the model number. And I wonder what it would say. Would it say it's a 90 or an 80? Anyway, let's go. A very impressive boot time into Windows 11, which of course this machine supports because of its 8th generation Intel CPU. It is one of those things that it, reading the bottom of the machine, you wouldn't necessarily expect it to natively run Windows 11. And when I turned this thing on, it was my first clue that something wasn't quite right. The other clue that I had is that the person that this is on loan from uh, was asking how my video of the 7490 was coming along. And I kind of raised my eyebrow and said, oh, it must be a typo because the bottom of the machine says 7480. But I also know this individual was very smart and probably knew exactly what it was. So at that point, I began to question what exactly was going on. So all in all, if you're looking to buy one of these machines, they vary quite significantly in price. Like your top tiers go for about 500 Canadian dollars. But if you're looking for an i5, they're around 300. So a lot of price variance. There's also quite a few of these machines on eBay for like sub 200 Canadian dollars as parts machines. And if you were to pick up a couple of these, you could probably build yourself a relatively decent fleet 
uh, without too much difficulty, presuming that the parts that it needs aren't things like, you know, system boards and, you know, where all the money's at. But overall, it's actually a pretty decent machine. We got good viewing angles. The keyboard's okay. I do love the inclusion of a point stick, as you know, even if it's not uh, my favorite point stick. And it's a relatively easy machine to take apart and service, and is also fairly durable as well. If you're looking for a used machine, this is quite okay. There's a few things that I wish it did differently, with the example of the keyboard uh, not being replaceable from the top is a bit disappointing, especially when that is one of the pieces that you're most often needing to service. The other issue, of course, with the bottom panel or the motherboard um, being the exact same size in between the generations meant that this machine, unless you were eagle-eyed, would go misidentified as the wrong generation. And in this case, uh, we would stand to benefit because it was newer than what we thought it was. However, the inverse could also be true, and that to me is a bit problematic for the used market. If you are a business that has a fleet of hundreds of these things, you don't really care because you know exactly what you have because you bought it. But as these machines change hands over time, I fear that there is a risk that there might be some disingenuous uh, opportunities for business practices that are uh, not exactly very kind to the seller. So just make sure that you are aware of exactly what you're buying so you're getting uh, the correct value for your money. Hopefully that bit of buyer advice is useful to you and that you've enjoyed it. And this has been a really good video for anyone that might be looking to purchase one of these for a few things to primarily check for. And that is again, multiple confirmations that the system specs are indeed what they say they are. And if you did find that advice useful, please do the big four. It does help support the channel immensely. Uh, if you like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I feature a Dell machine like this and give you a heads up on some of the quirks of buying one of these, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.